Welcome. Closing ceremony for our Surgeon City Science Institute for 2018. To the parents, we are privileged to have been trusted with your students during this week. And to the friends and families, you should be inspired by the intensity of learning, the meaningfulness of their work, and the understanding they will take away from these institutes. To the candidates for the title of Fellow of the Science Institute, we say, you have earned the right to be called a fellow. I am Paula Farnell, the director for the Sturgeon City Nonprofit and the director of these institute programs this week. Our other leadership is Dr. Don Herring, who's the chairman of the board of directors for Sturgeon City, and Mr. Glenn Hargett, the assistant city manager here with the city of Jacksonville. And I'm proud of the Sturgeon City Institutes to be a part of this program, and I'm proud of the partnerships that have created this program. The partnerships that's operated combined with the Sturgeon City Nonprofit, the support we receive from the city of Jacksonville, and the partnership from the Onslow County Schools and the Onslow County School Board in presenting these programs. This is the 20th edition of the Sturgeon City Institutes. So you are here for this program and you have been able to take part in a very special version of this program this year, but there are also other institutes that were going on simultaneously this week. We also had our New Generation Leaders Program, our Science Academy, our Public Safety Institute, and our Art Institute. The New Generation Leaders seek to prepare the next generation with special tools to be good citizens and leaders in our community. And the Science Academy group takes deeper views of science. This year there was a marine biology group as well as an engineering program as part of the Science Academy. And the Public Safety Institute learns what it's like to be a Jacksonville police officer and a member of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. They get to take part in many special activities throughout this week. And the Art Institute seeks inspiration from our environment and our community for expressing their artistic endeavors. Those participating in the Science Institute are eligible to consider these institutes next summer when Sturgeon City Institutes come back the week of June 17th to the 21st of 2019. We are all here as a part of a vision, um, a vision that Jacksonville can be a better place, a commitment by the elected leaders of the city and a desire to inspire young people to return to our community or stay here after their education. For 40 years, the city and others discharged into the New River, and in 1995, some 23 million gallons of hog waste were spilled into the river, and scientists and others feared that there would be fish kills and other impacts, devastation to the river. But this did not happen because the degradation was already so bad in our local waterways. It served as a wake-up call to our community, to our citizens, to our elected officials. Fortunately, city leadership had already begun work and was soon to break ground on a new environmentally friendly wastewater treatment plant um, using land application techniques and actually growing a pine forest um, with the treated wastewater. And so that was able to open in 1998 and we were able to close the Wilson Bay wastewater treatment plant. And the words moral obligation were used when city officials and community members got together and decided to take responsibility for the damage that had been done to the river and the bay and make something of it and tell our story through the site down there at Sturgeon City. And as a result of that work in the very first year of our Sturgeon City Institutes 20 years ago, a student found the first signs of life returning back to Wilson Bay. And now I'd like to share with you a little bit um, about the Sturgeon City nonprofit and we're working with City Council. Uh, we've committed to making the Sturgeon City site into an environmental education center and we'll now have a true connection to be able to continue our education about the New River and our relationship to it. And such is the stewardship and connection between the nonprofit and the community and the city officials and elected officials that for many years there were actions that degraded the river, but now we have taken responsibility, we have cleaned it up, and we continue to move forward with telling our story. Now going obviously into our 20th year of continuing to tell that story to students that participate in these programs and making sure those same mistakes will never be repeated again. This institute carries forth that promise that education in our community will help us to be able to take action in preparing young people for leadership in this community or in other communities where they may end up in their future. During this week, your students have had their adventures documented. Some of the documentation is available on our blog, which you can get to through the Sturgeon City website at www.sturgeoncity.org or at WordPress backslash Sturgeon City. And their work has also been documented through Flickr. All of the many photographs that our media team took, as well as the students themselves, will be documented on this page. And as always, um, we will be showing different portions of the week, portions of these closing ceremonies um, on government television um, throughout um, 
the next coming weeks and months, and also everything will be chronicled and um, shown available on YouTube. And of course, you can link to all of these by going to the Sturgeon City website. Let us now begin our recognition of those who participated in our Science Institute this program, this year. The Sturgeon City Science Institute. Science is about observation and study. And now, these students are in a unique group. Our observation is that they have now become part of the class of 2018 of the Sturgeon City Science Institute, and they're part of a select group of students that were chosen to be a part of this institute, to participate in this program this week. And someone thought that you had special talents, thought that you had earned the right to be a part of this program and work with us this week, and thought that you had special skills that could be fostered and grown, which is what you've worked on throughout this program. And you're obviously part of a group who took some initiative in choosing to want to be here and in participating with us this week. So you're now in a special group. To the candidates for the title of fellows, when we began the institute, we offered that you would have competent people as part of this institute. And I'd now like to introduce one of them to you who's been with you on this journey throughout this week, Ms. Pat Donovan Brandenburg. Thank you. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm glad to see all of you made it till Friday. On Monday, when we did the introduction, um, we talked about who we were and what we were trying to accomplish for the week. Um, and you guys were introduced to the starfish story. So how many of you remember the story? Everybody? So are you, everybody, the little girl that's going to save the starfish? If so, just sort of raise your hand, right? That's the one thing that we tried to teach. Parents, get them to tell you the story more than, uh-huh, yeah, no. Um, the students had a very, very busy week, and you parents probably realized that because you were washing their clothes when they got home. <laughs> and they probably did not smell well. And yes, we're sorry, you cannot get the mud out. That is why we gave them shirts three out of the five days. Your students traveled to different habitats. We were trying to get them to use their observation skills. Um, they worked along scientists uh, that use different equipment every single day. We taught them uh, the different parameters that they should be looking for. Um, and every day was getting wet as well as dirty. Uh, the heat was a huge factor this week, but I will tell you, and you're probably going to be surprised, Nobody complained. Nobody whined. I mean, everybody was all in. And I was kind of surprised because by the end of the day yesterday, I was severely whining. I was not in anymore. I wanted to go home. Um, but we're very proud of the students. They did a, a really good job. And this is our 20th year. And I, I have to step back and go, holy cow, I've been doing this for 20 years. Where, where did 20 years go? Um, it's just amazing. And then the, some of the leaders that we've had that we're very fortunate to have from some of the local schools they have been here almost equally as long. So what I'd like to do is introduce the staff real quickly because without them, everybody else would have gotten lost. So uh, first and foremost, if I can get Julie Bell to please come up because I think she's been with us 17 of the 20, 17 of the 20. And then her partner in crime, um, if I can have, sh no, it was Colin, Colin, it wasn't, it wasn't Sean, it was Colin. These are both, these are both the leaders for your uh, earth group, because we have it broken up into earth and moon. And if I can have uh, my two moon groups, uh, are Brandon and uh, Sean, if you guys will come forward. And then they are busy with the students from sunup to sundown. We also have another group of people that came in even earlier than these guys did, and that's uh, our stormwater water quality staff. So if I could please have Amanda, Aaron, and Tyler come up. Because it was 110, I got y'all coolers to help put drinks in that I 
I got the girls the ticket. <laughs> Maybe in my office there, Aaron. Well, yep. Aaron, your, yours is in the office. Uh, so. I've got it. It's in the office. Thank you very much. You guys were awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So just so you know what they did, they were getting all the waders, the seine nets, the dip nets, the Y size equipment. They were loading it up in order for all the students to use it all week. And then at the end of the day, they were cleaning that equipment for the next day. There's one more person. Oh, where'd she go? Miss Sean, will you come up, please? Our bus driver has been with us, what, 20, all 20 years? She knows exactly where she has to have these students every day on spot. And so, guys, please thank the bus, the bus driver. So, Miss Julie is going to um, introduce the groups, and then you'll, your students will be making your presentations. Thank you for letting us borrow them for the week, but you can have them back now. <laughs> Um, it has been our distinct pleasure to have the Earth and Moon groups with us this week. I mean, through, like she said, through the heat, the mud, the adventures, they, may, they met each challenge with a smile and a good attitude. And it was a hot week, but they really put forth their best effort. And we had a blast this week. Before the Earth and Moon groups do their presentations today, um, on this 20th anniversary, it is just truly amazing to believe that 20 years has passed since this really awesome program started, and it would not, absolutely would not be the same or run nearly as well as it does without Pat. She started the Wilson Bay Initiative with Dr. Levine 20 years ago, putting those oysters in the bay to do the right thing and clean that water, water column and get Wilson Bay to a place where people recreate and spend their time now. So I did want to take a minute to recognize her with a gift from the kids. Yay. No. And the card says, you didn't impact, didn't just impact us for a week, but for a lifetime. And really, it's been an amazing week, and we are exceptionally thankful that you were here with us. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> with that being said, we're going to start with the Moon Group's presentations, and following their presentation, their um, leaders will join them up here to pass out their certificates and recognize them also. So Moon Group, come on. I'm part of the Moon Go ahead, you're fine. I'm part of the Moon Group and I'm Joe Matthewitz. My name is Mariel of Dag Dag. I'm Justin Gutierrez. I'm Anna Morlick. I'm Nicholas Trigg. I'm Mallory McDonald. I'm Peyton Longfellow. I'm Carl Carter. I'm Melissa Van Sickle. And I'm Sophia Levine. Throughout the Sturgeon City Science Institutes this week, we have come into contact with and learned a lot about many different types of animals. Some of this information and research has been about the classification of animals, specifically their phylum. The six main phyla we were taught about were Chordata, Mollusca, Periphera, Nidaria, Echinodermata, and Anthropoda. Chordata is the phylum for organisms with spinal cords. Fish and humans are in Chordata. Oysters, clams, and mussels are in the phylum Mollusca. Mollusca has three categories, bivalves with two shell parts that filter water, gastropods with one shell part, and cephalopods, which include octopi. Periphera includes sea sponges, and they also filter water. Nideria includes coral and jellyfish. Echinodermata includes organisms with spiny skin, 
five points in a hydraulic vascular system, which means water propulsion. Arthropoda inclu includes organisms with an exoskeleton, segmented bodies, and paired jointed appendages. Oysters are an integral part of the Sturgeon City effort. Did you know an adult oyster can filter up to 10 gallons of water every 24 hours? Oysters are in the phylum mollusca and are filter feeders, which means they suck in water, filter through the nutrients to absorb what they want, and spit out the waste. Around 6 million oysters were put into Wilson Bay and oyster reefs to help with the cleanup effort. These are oyster shells at Sturgeon City. There are be reused and made of new oyster reef. We got a chance to talk to a herpetologist at Sturgeon City. We got to learn about and interact with various reptiles, including a Morlitz crocodile, a ball python, and a blind tortoise. Morlitz crocodiles are originally from Central and South America. They are born only six to seven inches long, about six inches a year, and is one of the smallest crocodile species in the world. Bipythons are nicknamed as such because they like to curl up into a ball shape. Ball pythons and all snakes shed based on their growth cycle and nutrition. Another reptile the herpetologist brought was a tortoise born without eyes. The three types of turtles are ter terrestrial turtles, aquatic turtles, and sea turtles. The differences are terrestrial turtles have legs and claws to help with climbing. Sea turtles have flippers. And terrestrial turtles can pull their limbs into their shells while sea turtles cannot. In this picture, Ms. Pat showed us the difference between land and sea turtles using the turtle school. This is the blind turtle that the herpetologist used to teach us about reptiles. And this is the extremely friendly ball python we got to hold. We've also discussed and observed animals in the different habitats we've explored. At the lily pond, we saw mosquito fish, tadpoles, and a variety of insects such as dragonflies and mosquitoes. At the intracoastal waterway, we saw baby spotfish, mud snails, grunt pink shrimp, grouper, pinfish, hermit crabs, blue crabs, scrawl filefish, glassfish, summer flounder, and snappers. At Onslow Beach, we saw sand fleas, seagulls, and pelicans. At the wetlands in Wilson Bay, there were a variety of little fish and tadpoles. In this picture, you can see a hermit crab in front of the intercoaster waterway. In conclusion, this institute lets us see organisms for ourselves and discover the secrets behind classifications and how animals are unique. We've gained a bunch of knowledge about the animal kingdom we've never thought of before, such as the fact that fish's hearts have three valves. Certain City has helped clean up the population in Wilson Bay, and because of them, we have been able to learn more about local wildlife. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Brandon Dillman, and I'm a science teacher here at White Oak High School. Um, I also have the extreme privilege, along with Mr. Sean Krogsrud, um, in leading the Moon Group uh, on their scientific explorations this week. And we are very proud to award the following students of the Sturgeon City Science Institute um, their awards. Uh, Mr. Kyle Kreiner. Um, Mariella Dagdag. Mr. Justin Gutierrez. Miss Sophia Levine. Miss Peyton Longfellow. Mr. Jaron Matthewitz. Miss Mallory McDonald. Miss Autumn Orlick. Mr. Nicholas Trigg. And Miss Alyssa Van Sickle. Great job this week, Moon Group. You may be seated.
sliding down to get everybody in. Keep going. Two more. Keep going. Two more. There we go. Thank you, dear. Good morning, my name is Ian Hudson. Hi, I'm Emily Goines. Hello, I'm Leona Norris. Hi, I'm Ireland Van Essendel. Hi, I'm Zoe McDowell. Hello, I'm Jacob Motes. Hello, I'm Samantha Miller-Barnes. My name is Justin Hawkins. Hello, I'm Tyler Gillette. Hi, I'm Savannah Brown. Hi, I'm Samuel Soares. Hi, I'm Shaquem Davis. I'm Corey Kupsta. All right, thank you. So, isn't it your summer dream to go on adventures in a school bus packed with science geeks in the 100 degree heat of the day? Yes. I, uh, of course, no. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> but we enjoyed it. <laughs> This week, we were a part of the Sturgeon City Science Institute for its 20th anniversary. Each day, we conducted research on several different habitats throughout Onslow County. We visited the Sturgeon City Salt Marsh, the Maritime Forest, the Land Application Plant, the Intracoastal Waterway, and the Onslow Beach. While investigating these various habitats, we learned about the structure and biotic life of them. The Land Application Forest and Maritime Forest, June 18th and June 19th. The Maritime Forest is located in between the Intracoastal Waterway and Onslow Beach. This led to the soil being sandy and porous. The trees in that area were short and close together, which protected them from the strong winds and harsh climate that comes from being near the ocean. Opposite of that was the Land Application Forest, where the trees were spread out and tall. The soil had a sandy loam texture, which allowed the trees to thrive. Plentiful vegetation abounded in this habitat, featuring loblolly pine, pine, red oak, and wax myrtle. Our city has produced a 6,000 acre thriving habitat versus discharging treated wastewater into Wilson Bay. The Lily Pond, June 18th. Situated within the loblolly pine forest, we put on our waders and trudged forward into this freshwater ecosystem. Loblolly pine trees emit tannic acid, affecting the pH of the water by increasing the acidity. The water quality in this habitat was fair, and we saw various forms of wild li wildlife, mainly insects. The Intracoastal Waterway, June 19th. We can verify that 100% of the Earth Group members got stuck in Intracoastal Waterway's monstrous mud. The water was brackish and boasted good water quality, while hosting a variety of biotic features, mud snails, pinfish, shrimp, blue crabs, and many more. The animals that have there has survived in an environment that constantly changes the in water level. The Onslow Beach, June 19th. <clears throat> At the beach, we learned about different sections above the tide line and below the tide line. In the saltwater environment, we sifted through multiple sa sand samples. While there was not evidence of marine life in the harsh environment above the tide line, we found coquina clams, shark's teeth, mole crabs, sand fiddlers, and sea urchin spines below the tide line. Oh, and there's a $150 reward for Leanna's glasses as an invasive organism. While wading through the wondrous waters of the salt marsh, we noticed specific aspects that contributed to this habitat. The fact that it was near a former wastewater treatment plant has been a major factor in the health of this location. We found that this area was very humid, muddy, and odorous. In addition, it was surrounded by Spartina, which was planted to rehabilitate the area by filtering contaminants in the water from years of pollution. Other plant species included morning glories, wax myrtle, and cattails. Throughout years of human environmental interaction, the animal life has migrated into the marsh grasses to hide. Some organisms consisted of juvenile bullhead catfish, gambusia, and water spiders. The salt marsh, according to our research, has come a long way from where it began. Thank you. Now, of all the aquatic environments we explored, our very own Sturgeon City had the best overall water quality. This can be attributed to the dedication of the city of Jacksonville, our community, and the contributions of youth through 20 years of the Sturgeon City Science Institutes.
And I must say, we all should thank them. Unless someone like you who cares awful lot, nothing is going to get better, it's not. Dr. Seuss, the Lorax, he speaks for the trees. We, we speak, speak for, for the, the trees. trees, will you? If you'll come up and uh, get your certificate as I call your name, um, Savannah Brown, <laughs> Corey Cupsta, Shaquem da Davis, Tyler Gillette. Emily Goins. Justin Hawkins, Ian Hudson, Zoe McDowell, Samantha Miller Barnes, Jacob Motes, Leona Norris. Sam Soares, Ireland Van Essendale. Thank you. Go on. Here now is a special presentation from what the group looked like this week from our media team.
That's all Sawyer. <laughs> we got you on video. <laughs> Um, I would like to share with you guys um, just a little vision of the future. So as we've talked about some this week, um, Sturgeon City uh, was born from taking responsibility, moral obligation to clean up, and I've talked about how we've worked together to be turning the site down there that was the former wastewater treatment plant into a true environmental education center. And I'm excited to announce that we have been making steady progress on our new environmental education center, a whole new building down there at that site. Here's a photo from April of this year. You can see we're already getting under roof. Um, this will be an over 11,000 square foot facility with about 7,000 square feet of usable programming space. I'll continue through here and show you some more pictures. Here's a little more recent update. Um, as you know, we've had lots of rain <laughs> and some weather issues, but we are moving steadily ahead still with this facility. And so when it's complete and fully built out, it'll have this large room that you see here, which is also able to be split into three separate classroom spaces. Um, and it will be able to hold um, all different activities for us, um, increasing all of our educational programs that we do down at Sturgeon City. We even have some wet laboratory space down here that we can do hands-on science experiments in. And of course, we'll continue to utilize all of our wonderful outdoor space that we have at the property down there that we are grateful to have access to. And this is just a little bit of a rendering of what the inside will look like. The wall, the outer wall that's going to be facing our current administration building is basically all glass windows and doors. So those will be able to open up right to the outside. And there's actually kind of an overhang there. So there'll be sort of a little outdoor patio area as well. Um, but letting in lots of natural light also for this space. And here's an idea of what it would look like, as you can see, with these split into the three separate rooms, also allowing us to hold multiple things at the same time. Right now, we're often very space limited and weather limited at our facility because we use a lot of the outdoor property. So this will allow us to really, truly expand um, and be able to offer a lot of new opportunities at this facility, as well as opportunities for the community. This is going to be available for other kinds of events and activities in the community as well. Um, so that's going to be a great benefit to Jacksonville and to Onslow County as well. Here are just a couple images, some renderings of what the outside will look like. Um, so we have kind of a combination of brick masonry on what will be the lobby portion of the building. Um, and then it's going to be, it's a kind of metal sheeting type of material as you were seeing from the roof and on the outer part of the, the large room um, meeting space there. And just a couple renderings of some of the different plans we've worked on over the years. Um, eventually, this might be a view of what the courtyard looks like as you look out of the back of the building. Again, trying to work on beneficial reuse of those structures and spaces that we have down there at the site, but also still keeping some of the historical structures to be able to tell our story and talk about where we came from and really learn from our past. But all different types of opportunities for courtyards and exhibit spaces with the former structures that we have. Here's some ideas of what we might be able to eventually do with the former bio tower. Those of you that have followed that structure um, know that recently um, the city staff worked very hard to remove the approximately millions probably of um, bio ball materials that were in that structure. So it is now empty. We're working on several different potential ideas for that structure, which was at one point the tallest structure in Jacksonville. If that's a little hard to believe, but it still provides a great view of the bay and out towards the bridge. Um, so it's a great spot at that facility and be able to connect students, um, have visual learning opportunities down there for students and the public, but connect them to our story. Again, telling where we've come from and where we hope to go um, so that we can learn from the past mistakes that we've made. And here again is just another, I was mentioning that view from the top of that structure is um, it's still pretty neat to be able to see. And so we've talked about some potential ideas um, for the top of that structure. And it's not only going to represent a tribute to successful cleanup of the bay and the river, but also demonstrate this community's stewardship, that they took responsibility, our community and our leaders and our city officials, and that we chose to turn this into a learning facility and be able to learn from our past mistakes and be able to build a better future and be able to create our future leaders and also become a true destination and place of pride for our community. And for those of you that may have been around or may remember, this was from a handful of years ago, I believe at our 15th year um, of the institutes. And we had the students that year form the shape, sort of the shape of a sturgeon, um, celebrating the commitment. This is the space where that building has been going up. 
to give you an idea. So it was just a flat gravel lot. Um, we've been doing a lot with that space there. Um, again, hoping to continue to grow these groups of students that come through these programs with us every summer, as well as the year-long programs that we do down there at the Sturgeon City site. And this picture was taken this year on Wednesday. You saw a couple video clips of us working to get this picture together. But here is this year's group that was with us to celebrate the 20th year of our Sturgeon City Institutes. And again, as you can see, you know, construction really was just started a few months ago and um, we're making pretty good progress. And so hopefully by this time next year, we'll be having some of these events inside that facility down there. And so I also wanted to just be able to go on um, and actually um, tell a little bit about some other things that we do here in the community and the other groups that we work with. And as we've talked about, there was a big commitment in this community to be able to work together. And we really found it important to be able to reach out to the community's youth. When the original restoration efforts began down there at Sturgeon City, um, people were surprised by how many youth came out as volunteers, as our community members. And so then it was, the idea was born that, well, we should have more opportunities for them and provide these educational programs and really get them involved. They're clearly already interested. And so one of those groups that was formed was our Jacksonville Youth Council. And it was formed as a partnership between the Onslow County School Board um, and the city in 1998. And it's a voice for young people in our community. It's provided a method to allow the practice of governance and more importantly, self-development. So this is actually an organization run by the students for the students. And so they are the officers. And here to speak a little bit more about the Youth Council is Dejawan, one of our lovely Youth Council officers. Pictures. Did you stand on this? Oh, wow. Well, uh, hello. Um, how's everyone doing? Good? Good? Uh, well, if you don't know who I am, I'm a Dejuan Ojibobo. I'm a rising senior at Jacksonville High School, and currently I serve as the chairman of the Youth Council. Um, so I want to know what you guys think. What do you think the Youth Council is? What do you think? What, what is it that we do? Okay, I like that idea. A little bit, a little bit there. Anyone else? No, no idea what we do. Well, so we are a student-led body. Um, we meet once a month here in the council chambers, and basically what we do is we kind of represent all the youth in the county to city council. Um, so we're open to all high school students across the county. Um, you guys are rising freshmen, yeah. What high schools are you going to? Do we have any Jacksonville High School? Yeah, go cards. I go to Jacksonville High School. Um, White Oak? Okay. That's unfortunate, but okay. Um, Northside? Northside? All right, quite a few. Um, how about uh, Southwest? Did I get everyone? Dixon? Oh, yeah, sorry. No one really cares about your school, but it's fine. Uh, so we meet once a month here. Um, I strongly encourage you to come to our meetings. We meet once a month. It's a lot of fun. Um, I did Surgeon City freshman year, and I can tell you that from, that was kind of the reason, one of the, one of the pathways to where I found out about Youth Council. My sister did it before me, and it has shown me so much about myself and this community. And uh, I know that if you consider joining us, we do a lot of fun stuff, and we're year round too. So like this summer, we're gonna be doing some college tours. Um, going to Carowinds, uh, we do a lot of cool things, so definitely consider it. Um, how many of you are interested in government? Any of you? One? Two? Um, what, what do you like about government? I want to know. Yeah, you. What's your name, by the way? Jacob. What? Jacob. Jacob, okay. What do you like about government? What do you not know? What do you, what do you already know about government? What do you already know about government? Nothing? It's fine. It's fine. Well, that's the whole point of the Youth Council. 
Um, we're going to educate you about uh, the city government and what the county government, all the different roles that we have. Um, I mean, any questions? You haven't, do you want to know anything about high school, about youth council? Um, high school's a lot of fun, I guess. It's a lot of work if you want, if you want it to be. So, uh, any questions? No? No? So, uh, um, our first meeting is in September. It's going to be here at 6 p.m. Um, September 1st, something like that. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, you guys should definitely um, think about checking it out. It's a great way. Those of you that are, you know, we're already interested in helping out in your community, being a part of your community by showing up here this week. Those of you that are now more inspired to be a part of your community by having come this week, um, definitely check out the Youth Council. It's a way to get involved and learn more about um, the city and what's going on, and also to have a voice. You know, if there's things in your community that you're looking for, or want to see happen or change, that's a way to get involved and actually have a relationship with your city and county government and be able to actually, you know, play a role in those decisions. So definitely think about checking it out. So some might still be wondering about um, all this talk about sturgeon. So we're going to move on now to one of the final acts of our ceremony. So we're learning all this week about environmental action and a commitment to advanced learning and stewardship. And the answer is simple, why we talk about sturgeon so much. Sturgeon are bottom feeders. They once freely traveled up the New River. They were prevalent in this area. Um, and unfortunately, due to pollution and due to overfishing and, of course, many other things that happened over the years, um, that species is no longer prevalent in this area. But um, they are very recognizable species, and they kind of still have this prehistoric look to them. They grow very large, and um, they are very important in this community, as well as where other species of fish. We're a very strong coastal community with fishing and water recreation, as we've talked about that. Um, but when all this area had gotten so polluted, they weren't able to survive here because they're sensitive to water quality and because they are that kind of bottom feeder, and they require us to be able to you know, create that food chain from the bottom up to be able to support them again. And so the cleanup of the river has been incredibly successful, but the dream was always that we could bring the sturgeon back. That if we got the river so clean, if we took efforts to maybe even help to try to bring them back, that they would come back and that would be kind of our true testament to the work that was put in by the city and by the community members and by all of you guys who participate in these programs. And so it's our duty to remember how the river was polluted and what we did and the actions that took place to clean it up and to continue to be a part of those types of actions as we go forward and to never forget um, the message of where we've come from. And there's different varieties of sturgeon, like there are different varieties of our institutes and our programs that we ran this week. And we seek to w welcome all into our communities. That's a good reminder, too, to always work together, to keep an open mind, to support each other, and to also recognize all points of view in any conversations that you have, because it took many different people of many different backgrounds to work together to clean up and to do the programs and the things that we have done here and continue to do. So that's something to always keep in mind as we go forward. And we want to spread the message that our city cares about youth, that we want you guys to be a part of our community and to feel that you have a place here and that you have a voice here. So again, things like this program and things like our youth council, that we want to make sure that you're represented in a true part of this community. And we want you guys to be able to be prepared as you assume your roles in the future. Again, whether it's here in this community or whether it's in other communities as you go on into your adult lives, we want to help make you as prepared as possible for those roles that you will play. And so as we've been talking about this week, the term fellow, a member of a learned society. And we told you that the end of our journey, of our quest for knowledge, those who complete the trip this week with us through the Science Institute will be given the title of fellow. You'll be a part of a special group, a learned society. So now we are going to administer the oath for the title of fellow. I'm going to administer the oath, and what I need for you to do is to repeat after me. I'll do it in little small sections, but here's a tip-off. When I say I blank accept the challenge, you say your name, okay? You actually, each one of you will say, state your name. Everybody okay with that? Okay, you ready? So I state your name, Pat Donovan Potts. You didn't say my name, did you? Because I'm already a fellow. I've been here 20 years. So let's try one more time. Say your name loud and proud. Y'all made it through this week. You're the 20th group. Woo! 
I state your name. I state your name. Accept the challenge, Accept the challenge of, the City of the Sturgeon City Science Institute. Science Institute. Oh, by the way, put your hand up. Let's make this real. Everybody up. <laughs> to, uh, to help others, to help others appreciate, our appreciate our environment. To help others, to help others share, my knowledge share my knowledge about our habitat. About our habitat. To inspire others. To inspire others to care for the living things, the living things around, us, around us and to continue, and to continue my, knowledge, my knowledge. This I do, this I do as, a as a fellow of the Sturgeon City, of the Sturgeon City Science, Institute. Science Institute. You are now graduates. The time has now come to close the 2018 Science Institute. The success of any edition of these institutes is not measured today, but in the future as these participants go forth into the community and they become leaders and good citizens and they contribute to the success of this community. It's our hope that they will join us in our love of this community, but wherever they go, if they may go on to somewhere else, whatever they become, our hope is that they know that this community cared about them, that we sought to nurture and lead them, and that we have a place for them here, always. We encourage the participants to participate in activities such as things like the Youth Council and other programs in our community and get involved in other things going on throughout the community and that they will wear their Sturgeon City Institute shirts with pride <laughs> as they go about their daily lives. This 20th anniversary of the Sturgeon City Institutes needs to be acknowledged for the 20 years of support by the Jacksonville Mayor and City Council in providing funding, inspiration, and implementation of these institutes. I hope that you start your appreciation for these institutes and you share your appreciation for these institutes with the mayor, with city council, with any other city staff that you may know or interact with in your daily lives, with other community members. Tell them all about it. We'd like for you to share your story and to tell them how proud you are and to thank them for their support, those of them that help us support this program. And next year, I hope you'll join us again. As we mentioned, we have several other programs that we run during these Surgeon City Institutes that you will now be eligible for starting next summer. So keep that June 17th through 21st, 2019 week in your minds as you go forward. I know it's a little crazy to think about next summer already, but just something to keep in mind as you think about your next plans. And with that, with all the participants acknowledged and with a review of the work of the institutes and with documentation made available, I therefore declare the 2018 Sturgeon City Science Institute adjourned. <laughs>